verse 40. Verse 40 says this. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. The thing that you'll notice is this is the will of my Father. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, and in many times in my life, I really struggled to figure out what the will of, of God is. I remember when I was in that place between kind of college and uh, of engagement, you know, I was, I was uh, dating Christina, I had to choose which path in college I was going to go to, so I didn't waste my, you know, the money in the college, and I had to figure all of this out. I had Christina on the one hand, and college on the one hand, and then this and that, and I really struggled to figure out what God's will was for my life, and inevitably, Christina's life, and all of that, and so I asked my father, he said, Joey, just marry Christina, will you? So I asked, I asked my friend, my friend Mike Ryan, who I talk about all the time, he said, well, you know, you, you need a you know, and, and we talked for, for a good hour. I talked to my youth pastor who, who uh, was very influential and, and inspired me to be a minister. And he said, um, you know, look at all the events in your life. And, and then I talked to uh, my professor whom, whom I adored and, and looked up to. And he said, you know, you're, the will of God is where your greatest passion meets the, need, the deepest needs of the world. Oh, a good Beekner line, good Frederick Beekner line, like that one. But the Bible is very plain. Do you want to know what the will of God is for your life? It's very simple. Do you want to know what the will of God is for your marriage? Or for how you, raise that, how you might raise your child? Do you want to know what the will of God is if you have a huge decision? It might be a, a, a million dollar decision. Or maybe a loan that you have to make tomorrow. You want to know what God's will is? God's will for you is to see God in your life and to believe in him. Well, that brings us to another question. How do you see God? And that really requires a personal relationship, doesn't it? We can talk about God all of the time. We can talk about the Bible all the time. We can squabble about the Bible. We can have our Bible studies. But it comes down to having that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't tell you how many mornings in my private prayer, prayer time I've spent with the Bible just reading through the Bible, kind of going through the motions, until finally, like I said last week, God stopped me and said, you need to stop and pray about this. Have you seen God? And then when you see God at work in your life, in the little ways that God shows up in life, do you believe in him? Do you place your trust in him? Do you give your life over to him? Uh, we were praying today in Sunday school, and we were talking about how to, how to live a spirit-filled life. And frankly, some of us just need to be blunt and say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. You have to articulate it. You have to hear yourself say it. Lord, I am yours. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my marriage. I give you my relationships. I give you all that I am. I give you my insecurities. In the midst of a life in which we struggle to, to be more for our, our children or our spouses or our loved ones, in which we try to do more, to try to satiate that, that, it, that tension in our life in which we wonder if we're effective, in a world in which we try to know more and try to come up with conclusions in order to solve our own issues, do we simply say, Lord, I am yours. Fill me up. This is the will of the Father, that you will see me and believe in me, that you might have eternal life, that on that day I may raise them up. 